Hey there, Luke here from Fluke Skysurfing and my new Alibaba Hydrofoil Assist is ready to go for its first water test. So in the last couple of videos, we assessed all of the components, we pulled the whole thing apart, I've made some modifications to it that I think will probably help it with its longevity and, and use, a bit of waterproofing, and today is the day we're actually going to get it on the water and give it its first test. So pretty excited to give it a go, I'm hoping that it lasts. Uh, so I have never used a Hydrofoil Assist before. I have hydrofoiled before of course but the hydrofoil assist is new to me so this video particularly is not going to be an epic riding video it's got more going to be just going out there getting the thing in the water seeing if i can make it work and making sure that it sort of doesn't break or catch fire We've made some waterproofing adjustments to the system, so at the end of this video we'll bring it in and we'll see if it's waterlogged or if that actually worked, and we'll see how the whole uh, system goes. Now, for this particular test, I'm going to be taking it out on my bigger 95 litre mid-length hydrofoil board. I'm also using an 80 centimetre carbon mast, and I'll be taking my sort of medium to low aspect 1560 centimetre front wing and I want to use a hydrofoil that's easy for me to ride because I've never used a hydrofoil assist before. And pitch control, I think, is going to be really important because I'm going to be constantly trying to control pitch for acceleration and deceleration and also maintaining the foil assist in the water when I'm under power and maintaining this sort of upper level when I'm just on foil. It's been a bit of a saga just trying to waterproof everything and trying to actually give this the best chance of success. And I'll give it a go. We'll bring it back in. We'll see if water comes pouring out of this we'll see if it's still operating and then over the next week and 30 days 60 days i'm going to continue riding this and i can give you more feedback on if it's still going as i start to progress my skills with this as well so it's time to finally get it on the water so let's get down the beach and see how it goes So I've just got back from the beach, taking it for its first test run. Everything worked as it should. Uh, I didn't notice any problems out there while I was on the water. And while I was, this is the very first time I've ever ridden a foil assist, so it was a bit of a learning curve on my part, I don't think that was any problem with the system itself. It was more just my technique and getting used to it. The trigger seemed to work really well, uh, and the variable speed was easy enough to work with. I thought I would need sort of less power, so I set it to about one third power to start with, but I actually needed it at level 40 out of 50 in order to have the perfect amount that I could actually just hold the trigger in full and get going so that was actually really helpful not having to play around with the variable speed too much but just holding it in full and getting going and then trying to get up onto foil and and zoom along but while everything's still wet i want to open up this battery compartment now and see if we're able to keep it waterproof so this is a big moment of truth obviously to see if those adjustments and modifications were able to keep this dry Just turn the battery off. You can see had almost full charge. I was out there for about 15 minutes. Now this is just the grease that I've put on there. That's not water. So, so far, it looks pretty dry. So 
there we go it's just a little bit of water there's a drop of water there if you can see it and the gasket has completely destroyed yeah you can see that's definitely a water droplet there so if we try and look in there it's just a droplet of water right on the floor there the terminal at the back looks pretty well protected with the grease still So while it's not completely waterproof, that's actually a pretty good outcome, I think. Just a couple of droplets of water in there that I can try and work out where that has come in. I think this new gasket held up. I don't think that's where it's leaking. Gasket broke. I just don't understand why. Why there was so much friction on that with all that grease right in the most critical area as well. But that aside, so far, so good. It didn't fail at all, and it was pretty fun. So I've just got in from my third session and really no complaints so far. I've just been mainly using it as an e-foil. So I've just been cruising around in the flat water, just getting used to actually using the device. I've jumped up onto foil a couple of times and just glided very briefly, but mainly I've just been cruising around, getting used to the acceleration and deceleration and just, you know, just uh, testing the unit and having a bit of fun, just sort of zooming around on foil. Uh, this time when I came in, there was no water in the battery compartment. So I think that's probably just due to the excessive amount of grease that I've been adding to every time, every time I pull it apart and put it back together, it's probably finally filled up all any of those cracks and holes. So that's a good thing. But of course the downside is just the amount of grease that I've got on everything all the time. Every time I pull it apart, I'm getting grease on my hands. And, uh, so it's not the cleanest outcome, but it is creating a waterproof box at this point. I've also noticed that the battery temperature has not been getting hot. Even when I'm just basically using it as an e-foil and cruising around the whole time, I haven't had it hot to the touch. The container certainly has never been even warm, but when I pull the battery out, it does feel slightly warm, but definitely not hot in any way. I'm in cooler temperatures at the moment and the water temperature is only eight degrees. So it's probably keeping it really cool. If you're in 30 degree water, that might be on a, on a 30 degree day, that might be a different story. But for these conditions at the moment, the battery is not warm at all. Okay, so now I've had four sessions using the foil assist. From a basic standpoint, we've got the hydrofoil assist. I've mounted it onto my board. I haven't removed any of these items at any point. So all I've been doing is taking the nose cone off, removing the battery, re-greasing everything, putting it back together, a bit of lubricant on the motor, making sure all the bolts are tight and then going out for a session. So I've done that four times so far. Two times I've run the battery all the way down to the nothing and then charged it back up. The products that I've been using to sort of waterproof it while I've been using it is a dielectric marine grease for the electrical components, this synthetic grease for just general waterproofing on some of the other areas as I've already talked about, fluid film spraying into this motor. This motor doesn't come apart like some of the other brands. So I'm just spraying it in the end anywhere that it has any moving parts. And this is this sort of thermoplastic sealant that I used to sort of seal up all of the box. At this point, the box seems waterproof. 
even though we got water in it on the first session, now there was no water in it for this session. So the gasket and everything's working. I'm adding a lot of grease. I didn't have any more problems with the, the washer coming off the end of the battery. Like we did the very first session, it sort of broke it off the end. Haven't had that problem since, but what I've been doing is being more gentle when I'm putting it in the box, you can't see that plug. So I'm sort of just wiggling it gently until it finds its seat and then just squeezing it in. I think maybe I just sort of uh, pushed it too hard at the, on the first time and it might've cut the edge of the seal or something like that, caught it on the edge of the plastic. The antenna is working fine. That hasn't come off. I haven't had any strange short circuiting, any smells, any burning, anything like that. No problems with that. Everything still seems to be working exactly like it worked the very first day when we set it up. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about performance. First off, I'm about 78 kilograms. This whole setup, the board, the foil assist, the mast and the wings weighs around about 17 to 18 kilograms. So there's a fair bit of weight just in the setup itself. It's kind of heavy to get up and down the beach and it feels a bit sluggish when you're on the water. But I've been using this so far only as an e-foil. I've just been cruising around in flat water. I haven't been riding swells or anything like that. I haven't been pumping around. I've just been getting used to using the, the device really and getting used to the power delivery and things like that and just cruising around. So, the thrust of it for that purpose has been fine. It gets me up and going on plane easily. I'm setting it to about 75% power on the throttle, and then I can sort of pull the trigger all the way in and I've got that 75%, and that's enough to get up on going and cruising around. I'm riding a big foil, 1500 centimeter square centimeter, or even my higher aspect, 2000 square centimeter foil. So top speed is very slow. So I'm literally just cruising around e-foiling very, very slowly, just getting used, like I said, getting used to the, uh, the whole system. Because I've just been using it just mainly as an e-foil, it's running for about 30 minutes. About 25 to 30 minutes is what I'm getting out of a whole battery. And what I'm finding is as the battery starts to deplete, it does actually start to generate less power. It's not like your battery drill, for instance, which will almost run at 100% power until the minute that it shuts off. This definitely, I could feel it declining in power towards that last quarter of the battery. So you, the first three quarters of the battery, I was finding I had this, the same amount of power. I'm cruising around at the same speed. I've got the same thrust to get up. But in that last quarter, I could feel it starting to get very sluggish. So you sort of know that it's getting depleted. And then in the last bar, it just I couldn't even get up on foil at that point. Still had enough to just taxi into the beach. Now for the runtime, once I start riding swells, of course, it's going to run for 30 minutes worth of drive time you could say, and it's going to have however much other time you've got riding swells when it's not being used. One thing I really did notice that was surprising to me was just the huge amount of drag that comes from the battery container. This battery box, when it hits the water, it was like putting the brakes on, which actually stood out to me a lot more than I thought it would. You obviously have seen those boards now that have the recess in there that fits the four drive down. And I actually think now riding this, that that actually is a pretty good idea to get that water flowing over the bottom board a little smoother will really help because there is a particularly a large amount of drag coming from this box. Also, even the drag from the prop and the motor section, I found to be way more than I was expecting. When I'm e-foiling around, it's kind of like this strange sensation of acceleration and drag at the same time. It's kind of like you're getting pulled or pushed by something, but you're also towing some seaweed behind you. And it's just like the, I think it's just the water flowing over this whole section is a lot more drag than what I'm used to when I get on foil. If you're, if you're foiling any other way, you'll know that when your board's on the water surface, you're feeling all of that uh, water surface tension and drag. As soon as you're up, you feel like this, oh, this release and this glide. That doesn't happen here. Even when you get up onto foil, you can still feel the prop in the water and you can still feel that drag that's being generated from that. So it's an interesting sort of feeling. Even though you're motoring along and even though you're up on foil, it doesn't have that same free feeling that you have when you don't have a motor or a prop in the water at the same time. Obviously that's gonna change once you pop up and get onto the foil and get the motor out of the water. And you can see with this setup that the cable length means that the motor is actually quite low to the water. So I don't have a lot of space here to be on foil without touching that. A lot of the foil drives are sort of down here, a little bit closer to the board. And I think that's going to help a lot in giving me more play for actually foiling. For e-foiling that I've been doing at the moment, even this far from the board, which is about 385 millimeters or 15 inches, 
keeping the pitch control with that much space actually has been pretty challenging. So I think it's going to be really quite hard when I bring that down and I've got more space for foiling, which I want, but just being able to keep the board in that perfect height, cruising around, it's just a skill that you have to learn. But so far I did find that it was a little more challenging than I thought it would be. And so all of that is to say that choosing this cable length is pretty important. You really want to set yourself up, I think, so that you bring the motor closer to the board, give yourself more room to move when you're on foil, and just deal with the touchdowns and sort of just hovering just slightly above the water surface when you're taxiing back out into the back of the lineup. That's definitely, that's definitely the setup that I'll want them to do. So I'm going to try and either modify this with the other cable that I did get that you might have seen in the first video, or I'm going to have to find a way to sort of tuck this in somehow. So now with the remote, if you remember at the start of this video, I had to recalibrate it so it knew the upper and lower limit of the throttle. Otherwise it would free spin at startup. On the fourth session, it started free spinning again, meaning that I had to recalibrate it again after four sessions. So that's something worth noting. The safety mechanism with it, go fall off, go underwater, it shuts off the motor, that's working really well. It locks, you unlock it, it goes again. One thing that I've noticed though with the throttle is there's a slight delay, almost a one second delay from when you push the throttle to when it does anything. And so if you're, for instance, you know, coming up over a swell or you pitch up a little bit in the foil and you drop the throttle so because you don't want to breach, then you start falling down, you go back on the throttle and there's nothing there for like a second. And so what I was finding was if I dropped the throttle, I'd breach or I'd come up and then I'd start to fall, I'd get back on throttle hoping that I'm going to keep going, but it wouldn't, it would wait and I'd crash into the water and then it would be boom, you know, acceleration again. So just worth noting that there is a bit of a delay there with the throttles and I'm gonna keep making videos on it and we'll keep seeing if it continues to operate, continues to perform, if I have any failures with it. So I'm gonna make a couple of videos after maybe 10 sessions, 30 sessions, things like that in some swell, out there in some windy conditions, maybe try and pair it up with the para wing, take it out of my new board that I'm shaping and I'll sort of keep you posted on how things continue to progress with this unit. So hopefully that was a fair representation of what we've got so far with this Alibaba bought Hydrofoil Assist. But this video isn't necessarily about recommending that you go and buy one or you don't buy one. I'm just sort of giving you the information. So anyway, like I said, that is it for this video. I'll see you in some more videos. And if, you, if there's any particular area around this product that you really that i missed or there's some more information that you want you can ask me in the comments and i can cover that in the coming videos as well if that's helpful and yeah i hope to see you in there thanks again guys see you in the next one